Hey everybody, before we get started, I just want to remind you this episode is brought to you by patrons like Adam DeHarp, Aka Comics, Aka Kazume, Architect 10, Blix G, Carlos, Qua, Dragon, Ferris, Jeremy Vasquez, Jonathan Sandoval, Kylie Denton, Legendary Boss Hunter, Liam Kessler, Regent Raptor, Rogue Robin, Sharvor, Shiny P, Some Guy Named Bob, Soda Son Over to Ver, and Cyber23. If you like what you do want to see do more, consider to post a on you get access to episodes early and lots of other goodies that helps us out. Thank you for your support, everybody. Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Talk FGO Wanted, the show where we let you know if you want to roll that five star today to celebrate our fourth anniversary of FGO NA server. We will be talking about limited SSR writer Leonardo da Vinci Chan, also known as Da Vinci Small, and other names. So normally, normally, this is where I would mention the various segments of Wanted. How usually we break it down and talking about a character's real life history, their lore with a capital L, their mechanics, and then their rarity, not their star rarity, but how often their rate-ups are, along with lots of other little bits and bobs we picked up over the years of doing this show. But, uh, hey, this episode will not be doing that because we're looking at a alternate version of a pre-existing limited SSR, so this will probably be a lot more like our summer blowout episodes where we hit up all those guys because they're alternate versions of existing characters. But there's a little bit more there. We do actually have a little bit of lore to specify. The small from the tall. Oreo minis from Oreo family size. Many, many other memes I've made over the years. Anyway, we've got a couple of things to talk about, but yeah, this video is going to be shorter and be different, so sorry. Mm -hmm. But this does mean that there's a perfectly good wanted already out for Leonardo da Vinci caster, where you can learn more about Leonardo da Vinci if you somehow don't know about Leonardo da Vinci. Check it out. It exists. Just because you haven't seen it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Go watch it. Anyway, we're going to skip the extra history stuff, and we're going to skip some of the initial lore. We're going to focus on a quick recap of the lore, and then jump into the mechanics really fast, and that'll be about it, basically. So this one's going to be shorter. Sorry. Don't worry. We'll have plenty to talk about mechanics. But uh, yeah, the front half's a little light. Sorry. But we're going to skip history now, and then I'm going to go down to lore. And lore starts with, if you're currently playing FGO, you probably know who the writer Da Vinci is, because this is why we're going short on lore. She's introduced at the start of the Part 2 story, Cosmos and the Lost Belt, and is a major supporting character in the story, just like regular Da Vinci is a major supporting character in Part 1. And if you didn't know that, you do now. So, this small Da Vinci calls herself a pseudo-servant. The general idea is that she is an artificial heroic spirit. She was made by the original Da Vinci as a backup of all her know-how and stuff, and as an assistant in preparation for the Part 2 story, and thus, she appears in the Part 2 story. It's very simple. She possesses all the OG Da Vinci's memories, but does not, did not experience them, so it's a little different. It's kind of similar to how her experience are supposed to work between summonings, where they have access to all the reference material of their previous summonings, unless they choose to forget it, but they don't always have the emotional context. So yeah. And uh, her quote-unquote real name, at least as listed by her upcoming profile as a playable unit, is technically Gran Cavallo. Uh, which is named after a statue, the Colossal Horse, which Da Vinci didn't get to finish in real life. So it's kind of a lost work. You can see the sketch now on screen for this little intro bit. Uh, it was a statue that was commissioned, but Da Vinci didn't get to complete. And several people have made uh, completed versions based off his drawings and castings and stuff. It's a pretty impressive, highly detailed horse that's large, the Gran Cavallo. But uh, yeah, it's just a little cool, funny nickname tidbit they threw in there. All right, let's talk about mechanics. So, Gran Cavallo here is a rider with low attack and high HP, very similar stat line to Maid Alter in that respect. So, yeah, they're within ballparks of each other. It's a similar stat spread. She has a Saber-type quick arts, arts, buster, buster deck with higher hit counts and thus more average NP gain. You may think this is bad. It's not. Uh, this is one of those few times where I think a servant has been fairly well balanced within her niche without going too ham one way or the other. Because you don't really care that her MP gain is average because she's got an Arts AoE NP that gives her a boosted Arts performance for one turn based on overcharge. And then charges the team's NP flat 20%. This begins her primary strategy, which is having her and the whole squad use NPs a lot. It's a very simple design principle, but it works. So, her first skill is Golden Rule Body, now at EX rank. Gives her three turns of debuff immunity. That's pretty cool. 500 to 1k HP per turn. That's all right. And the big one is 10% to 20% NP per turn for three turns each. Yes, 
This does mean at level 10, when you fire her NP and you've got this skill up, you will get a minimum of 40% battery back plus whatever she gains back on the NP's three hits. Yeah, her NP's only three hit arts. That doesn't matter with her skill setup. You're talking about getting 40% refund just from watching the turn roll over and doing her NP. It's pretty good. Second skill is basically Summer Ishtar's Axel turn. It's a one hit evade and a one turn of 30% crit up with a four turn cooldown. Good for casual NP dodging. Also, if you do actually get, you know, a chance to crit, she's also a rider, so she will probably get the stars. Can give you some decent arts crits for faster NP charge. Now, the final skill is Dream to the Stars. This gives all allies 20 to 30% NP damage up for three turns. It also fills up the team's NP gauge by 10%. Yep, that's right, there it is. And also gives everybody on the team plus one overcharge level for one turn, so watch out for that. It's only one turn, but it's a good way to get team MP. Passives are writing B, territory creation C, and a special overhaul passive C, which gives her 20% debuff resistance and 20% extra star gen. Oh, why did I say E? C, it's E, isn't it? Let me double check my own notes. Yeah, it's E, not C. Maybe I misread my funky font. You guys, you caught me in an error, but I'm going to leave it in because the video is already super short. There's a funny haha thing. There was an error in my notes. Anyway, Da Vinci's basic strategy here is to loop her NP with her arts buffs and with other arts buffs and her golden rule at high enough level. She can basically fire her NP every time on doors for high speed QP paring. And in general, just put her in an arts comp and she and the rest of the party should be firing NPs with regularity. I have not seen her soloing doors loops. But with the combined level of the recharge per turn and whatnot, you should be able to blow up doors with some supporters and get her to fire it three times in a row before her golden rule runs out. So for CEs, you'll probably pair her with a starting charge like K-Scope or 50% and another battery servant to get her rolling. If for some reason you don't want to start immediately looping, focus on arts or NP damage CEs. If you have an MLB K-Scope, that works perfectly. But yeah, your primary thing will be to give her starting battery so you can juice her up or to make her NP hit harder. This means you have a wide variety of units to pick from to support her. If you're looping doors, the humble Helena has a 20% team battery, which can be used with K-Scope. Or you can go with Waver for a maximum of 50% battery. You know, those are your two primary batteriers, but you've got a lot of other combos you can throw in there. Tamamo, of course, has the necessary buffs to amp her NP. But humble free-to-play units like Paracelsus can also amplify Da Vinci's powers. Uh, Paracelsus has a team-wide arts up buff and a big NP gain buff on his Philosopher's Stone. Otherwise, feel free to get esoteric with anybody who has good arts synergy. You know, are you in for a like a long haul type challenge quest thing where you need some tanks? Prince of Landling is an art saber who has defensive options. There's a lot of other like weird little niches that people have. Da Vinci is an art servant primarily. That's her primary output is NP. She does have some buster cards if you wanted to switch to a buster strategy. Uh, for instance, because she's going to have a lot of star weight, you could like kit bash a Merlin in because he does have a 20% battery and you can make those two buster cards of Da Vinci's hit really, really hard. But primarily, you want to fire your NP over and over again. Naturally, later, Castoria will get along great with her. It's very funny how they come about a year apart. But uh, yeah, Castor Artoria will definitely make this even more nonsensical. Now, since Da Vinci is released at an anniversary and not tied to a brand new story, her Ascension materials are not brand new and should be reasonable for most players. You've got some statues to worry about. I used to have problems with horseshoes back in the day. And, you know, 15 gears is a decent chunk, but hopefully you've got a decent backlog built up. Those are early gen materials. You should have gotten a few playing the story and so on. Unfortunately, we are not so lucky with her skills. They will require you 15 cores per skill and 10 eggs per skill. Cores make sense, but eggs? Help a brother out, Delightworks. I don't think I own that many eggs. It's going to be a real pain in the butt. But uh, yeah, so uh, the, that is unfortunate because you really do want at least her first skill to be at max level. So you can actually, you know, use it to restore that much NP at the end. So it's pricey, but hey, here we are. It be what it be. Luckily... Da Vinci Rider here has quite a few rate-ups, in addition to being a future Lucky Bag feature, because she's limited. She's the debut servant for the 4th anniversary, but will return on rotation for the 5th anniversary, though sadly never on a double rate-up with Kestria. You gotta pick your days carefully there. She also will get a solo rate-up confirmed in the Lost Belt 6 pre-release campaign as well. Obviously, those kinds of pre-release campaigns can be a little baity. You know you've got new servants coming, and we also know now that there's a Kestoria second rate-up coming up after that as well. But... 
all these raid ups are kind of decently spaced out over a few months, you can hopefully get some chances to get some follow up if you want, say, extra NP levels or you missed, you know, go in there. Also, by the way, talking about bonus servants and so on, uh, th because she is the small, this new Da Vinci will be a bonus servant for the Only Land rerun later this year. I hope to see her. And uh, that's all I got, folks. I'm sorry if this is so short, but this is what there is. It's kind of like talking about an OG, but they're OG to FGO, so there's not a lot of story to go over that's not just, like, breaking down literally every Lost Belt as it happens. BT Dubs, you can watch our podcast, Let's Like FGO, where after every Lost Belt that we've beaten, me and my co-host Lucky break down every single story beat. Thank you. All right. That's all I got. I'll see you next time. Do the loop! Anyway, if you've liked this video, be sure to give it a like. If you have any comments, leave them in the comment section down below. You can also join our Discord. That link is, as always, on our video description and on our channel page. If you're new here and haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. We are at 3K subs, finally. But also, will we stay there? I don't know. The sub count has freaked out a couple of times. Sub now to make sure we stay over 3K. Be part of history. Even if you're already subscribed, also consider hitting that bell for notifications so you always know when we post a new video or when we stream. Because we stream a decent amount, sometimes without warning. And it helps. Notification squad, go. You can also join our channel memberships to get special emotes you can use and membership badges. And like I said at the front of the video, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can get access to this video early and you can get access to our podcast. Let's take FGO in audio format for as little as a dollar a month or $10 a year. At higher levels, you get access to all videos early and lots of other things. And it really helps us out. All right. I will see you guys next time for... Probably me dying because I have to make so many summer videos. Bye.